Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. Today we're in Chicago with another TCR and we're here with my good friend Eric. What's up guys? You guys have seen him in plenty of my videos by now. Uh, we actually met each other. Uh, I was getting my car tuned by Mikey. You were getting your car tuned. Yep. We just happened to be, you know, same same place, same day kind of thing. Yep. And uh, we hit it off, obviously, because we have the same car. So Eric's a really good technician and uh, he Appreciate builds it. some crazy stuff. So we'll just go ahead and uh, find out what he's got going on here. So what what's the, uh, obviously it's a Honda Civic. So it's a 92 Honda Civic uh, CX that I picked up from a friend who was going to turn it into a road race car and just never got the time to. So he gave me the opportunity to buy it from him. How long ago was that? This was going to be now two years. Two years. Two years ago. And it was just a roller, a shell with a already uh, welded in cage. And I uh, started piecing parts together and I, I knew I was going to make it a dedicated track car. So I was able to, you know, get the parts that I wanted to, um, to make it that especially. It. So the goal was to, to build a track car. Correct. How long did it take you to get the car from the roller to to this state right here? So I like to work fast and I knew exactly what I wanted. So um, luckily I was able to collect all the parts ahead of time and um, I got on it right away. I had a friend of mine respray the car. It was orig originally white. We just, you know, wanted to make it look a little bit better. It took about, I'd say, the whole off season during winter time. Which I is just, really quick. Yeah, Which it's really quick. quick. I, I, I just, I, I knew what I wanted and I just wanted to get it done, you know. So in the front, I have a DIY uh, front splitter that I made um, using just some boards and some stuff from Home Depot, you know, the old typical Home right. Depot lip. Is it wood? It's Mid wood, okay. yeah, Got it's it. plywood. And I'm using the um, Professional Awesome Quick Disconnects for the splitter and the rods. Exterior-wise as well, I have the PCI side skirts. Uh, PCI rear wing. Other than that, I wanted to keep it more uh, original. Uh, I didn't want to do anything too crazy. Uh, stock hood, you know, stock, stock fenders. Stock fenders. All stuff, right? Yeah, all that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, just simple, subtle touches that make it actually look really, yeah. really good. The and spoon mirrors. Clean, yeah, spoon mirrors. It's actually a really clean shell. This was, uh, where did you get the shell from again? It was like, it was a North Pacific Northwest car, right? Yeah, so it was from Washington. My buddy got it from Washington. Uh, from an old lady who used to trailer it behind her motorhome. It was immaculate, zero rust, and I knew I had to have it when yeah. I saw it. Those are the unicorn cars yeah. where you have like an, an old lady or old yeah. guy that owns yeah. this thing and just takes the best care of yep. it. Yep, yep. And then they sell it and it turns into a race car. Turns into a race car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you got for your uh, wheel and tire setup? So for wheels, um, currently I have 15 by 8 Roto slip streams on Hankook rs4s i prefer the falcon rt660s um i had better luck with them earlier on in the season um i felt they gripped a little bit better but these were good to finish off the season they held up the whole rest of the summer yeah um, if you want longevity rs4s are the way yeah to yeah and and it just takes a little bit longer to get them warmed up but they definitely start to work once you get in there brakes i went with the home development uh porsche setup so they're the 986 Porsche calipers on uh, their custom made bracket to fit the Honda knuckles. I'm on Mini Cooper uh, rotors. 280 mil. Yep, rotors. 280 mil rotors. DCT60 uh, Hawk pads in the front. Um, in the rear, it's just a rear disc conversion with factory ca uh, calipers and factory pads. And uh, what do we got going on for your suspension? So for suspension, I, uh, I got all of the PCI uh, components from their catalog, upper control arms, spherical upper control arms, uh, the spherical bushings for the lower control arms, spherical trailing arm bushings, spherical tire ends, uh, spherical upper control arm, uh, upper camber arms. Lower control arms are also PCI, spherical, everything. Um, I just felt like I wanted to go all in from the start. For coilovers, I have the SPGC ground control full body uh, coilover setup. It was recommended to me by Eric Cattile. Um He runs the Yellows, I believe, or did at the time. Um, now he's sponsored by somebody else. But. Yeah, I mean, that's like the Kone ground control setup has always kind of been like the, the OG go-to setup. Yes, everybody that I've talked to love it. What spring rates are you running? So I'm running 800 in the front, 600 in the rear. It was something that was recommended to me by other 
uh, friends of mine that have been doing some road racing for a while. Similar um, setups. They have very similar setups. I've come from drag racing, so I didn't know. We used to go just as stiff as possible. Yep. Yep. And this is totally different. So I had to go with, you know, a, a recommendation by someone that has tracked for a while. All right, cool. And what do you have for sway bar setup? Uh, front sway bar is stock ITR. And rear sway bar is also stock ITR, which I think I'm going to plan to remove the rear sway bar. Um, remove the rear sway bar? Remove the okay. rear sway bar, yeah. Too much rotation? Too much rear? rotation, I Got feel. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try it, see how it goes. If it doesn't, I don't have much adjustment on it since it is a factory sway bar. Right, right. So um, we'll give it a shot for next year. Yeah, I mean, there's several things you can do to try to tune that out. So, yeah. I mean, that's a good place to start. Yeah. So. All right, kind of give us a, a walkthrough of what you got going on under the hood here. So um, I wanted to run the K20 over a K24 just for the uh, reliability and um, a being able to rev a little bit higher with the K20 versus the K24. I kept power steering. Um, it was something I, I've always wanted to try, and um, I've had multiple people tell me one way or the other is both fine. It's just different type of steering feel and and um i mean it just comes down to preference really. yeah it's i think it's preference and some people like more uh, feedback yeah more steering feedback i think from having non-power steering yeah. and having power steering is the the engine itself is it is it stock internals yes yeah, completely stock okay. internals um i wanted to keep it just like this just to to progress later into something more with more power and reliability more than anything. Right, right. Because so, especially when you're learning, you yeah. don't want to be spending time fixing the car. Exactly. You're just driving I, it. So I wanted to just drive it, and it held up all year without any issues. So it's just a stock engine, and you just got the bolt-on. So that, yeah, so it's all the RRC. RRC right? manifold, um, and I have a uh, R crew header. Um, I wanted to go with a little bit better header than um, just an eBay one for clearance issues and the same thing a lot of those like to crack and they're not welded properly so I didn't want any issues at all. Is that a, going to a two and a half inch exhaust or a full it's three? It's a full three inch exhaust to a K-tuned uh, turn down muffler. Running a K-tuned throttle body, um, a lot of the K-tuned accessories for like the coolant um neck hybrid racing full size radiator which is super important if you're going to be ra road racing you want to have a good good cooling what uh, engine management is it tuned up uh, it's on uh handata uh k pro version four and tuned by mikey of course yeah right. tuned by mikey for the engine wiring i took a factory harness that i tore down and depinned and loomed with um this nice black sheathing um i've had issues in the past with aftermarket harnesses uh, coming apart and having all kinds of electrical issues. So one of the biggest things for me this year was with this vehicle was to ensure that everything was as reliable as possible without having issues. So I decided to go into it myself and ensure that everything was good. For the trans, it's a RSX Type S six speed with an ITR LSD um, that I plan to upgrade uh, next year for a M factory one way. You excited for that? Yeah, oh, I can't <laughs> wait to see how uh, how different the car comes out of the corners, and even braking I hear is going to make a big difference. Yeah, clutch is a stock Exedi stage. Well, not a stock. Uh, Exedi stage one stock flywheel, and uh, decided to keep it simple as well. I didn't want too harsh of a of a clutch, something that would keep up with the stock motor, and the stage one was more than enough. It right. held up all year. It's not like you're making a ton of nope. torque. it only makes like that, so. it only makes two fifteen. Um, to the wheels on 93 for the track that's more than enough yeah with this light of a car um, <laughs> yeah. the car weighs 2085 with me in it there so what do we have going on on the inside of the car here so um like i said earlier the cage was previously installed um when i bought the car i believe it was done by uh, tf works it's just a half a halfback cage no door bars no 10 points just a six point um being it's just an HBD car, I felt it was more than enough. For safety, I went with the Sparco um, Pro Advanced Passenger in a circuit driver's seat. Um, full Halo, I wasn't going to go with the Full Halo, but, um, you know, why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're the same price. You know, it helps also with the Hans device to keep you, you know, your head placement from shaking a lot. Right. More um, safety is never a bad idea. Yeah, so you can never have too much safety. Right. Um, went with the Sparkle harnesses as well, Sparkle steering wheel. Um, I'm running a Circuit Sport 
uh, hub and quick release, race bread pedal, um, I guess you could say foot. Heel plate. Heel plate, yep. yeah. It helps keep your feet in place correctly for the pedals. Uh, me being shorter and having smaller feet, that helps tremendously. The chassis harness is done by Wireware. Um, I use their fuse box and um, it allows you to have uh, up to three auxiliaries on the switch panel. So there's a push start, ignition, lights, and then three separate auxiliaries if you want to have some kind of external gauges or um, power electric power steering or yep. anything and you need to turn it on. I have their ECU mount as well to keep the ECU off the ground and planted so you don't want that sliding around and yeah vibrating because that's super important yeah. nice place for all your electronics to just mount up to in one location. yeah it keeps it all neat in place you know nothing's hanging all over the place i went with the aim uh strata for my display um it's not necessary i think but it's really nice to have everything in front of you uh, especially for the temps that you have to keep an eye on water temp oil temp, oil pressure is super important. Yep, yep. Um, and it also has um, some other cool features like gear selection and RPM shift light, a lot of a lot of cool stuff that, you know, just helps with a race car to keep your, your eyes centered and not looking around at multiple gauges all the time. Right, a lot of functionality that you don't necessarily need right now, yeah. but you know, down the line, the, these types of things get more, yeah. more important. And you just kind of just used a, some uh, flat carbon and made a mount. Yep, yeah, I made my own custom mount out of some flat carbon and then uh, blocked off the dash with some carbon sheet as well, just to make it look nice um, as well with this gauge pod I have a PLX wideband and a separate oil pressure uh, oil temp gauge just because um, you want to have multiple just to make sure if one goes out uh, one of the sensors can fail and you still have some kind of mechanical um, a oil fail pressure safe, yeah. a fail safe yeah. yeah also went with the hybrid racing version 3 shifter and shifter cables I've had all the other ones except for the acuity one but the Ktune one factory one and um, I feel this one is the smoothest it's super notchy um, I like I prefer that notchy feeling so I know that I'm in gear right um, there's adjustability for shorter throw higher um, shifter positioning and angle so you can get it as close as you can to the steering wheel so yeah. you don't have to search for it I went also for safety um, I got the fire extinguisher mount from uh, Checkered Sport? No, I mean, that's not Checkered Sport. That's uh. I think it is Checkered Sport. Is it Sport? Checkered Sport? Yeah, yeah it is it's Checkered Sport. The, the, uh, the element. Yep. The element, yeah, uh, it's the uh, element fire extinguisher. You never know when something can happen. Um, you know, you're not supposed to get out of your car at the track unless it's on fire. Yep. And that's something super quick and easy to just help save your car if you're able to get to it. What's something that's, that's special on this car or like a special part or there's a special story on, on something in particular? What would that be? I think it's the wiring harness. Uh, that I took my time on. It took a lot of hours, about three or four hours to tear down and make sure everything's good and, you know, heat shrink properly and get into the place that I wanted to. Um, it was important for me because of all my previous vehicles that I had always had some kind of wiring issue and it, it always came down to the aftermarket wiring harnesses that just weren't up to par. There are some wiring harnesses that are top notch. Rywire has some really nice fancy harnesses, but at the same time, you know, quality control isn't always there. So um, I just felt me being a Honda technician and I know clearly what I'm doing, I just wanted to just make sure that, you know, it was, it was handled without relying on somebody else. All right, Eric, how long have you been uh, driving or tracking your car for? So this car, I just started tracking this year. I had just got into as well uh, road racing this year. Um, I drag raced for quite a while since probably 2008, but it just, it got old and expensive. I'm not saying that this isn't expensive, <laughs> right. but it was just pushing the car to its limit every single day, hoping it would go faster or break something. So. I took a break from that. People started going really, really fast and it would cost a lot of money to catch up. So I decided to, you know, get with some of my friends that road raced for a while and uh, finally got into a car and I loved it. So I decided that, you know, I would build a car of my own and um, get on the track myself. A lot of people <laughs> are get, get amazed that it's a track car and I, I keep it this clean. Um, 
I just, I don't know. I have a thing for, you know, show track cars, I guess. Yeah, um, I mean, if, it, if you can be all show and go, then yeah. my, go ahead. Yeah, do it, yeah. Then, and I mean, and it's, it, it gets beat up. I have to change a couple things here and there. You know, the side skirts are bent. Had to fix those. Lost a couple lips. But, you know, other than that, you know, Gingerman's a super safe track if you do go off. And that's the only track I've tracked so far yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been lucky enough to keep the car together and, you know, clean. So yeah, that was going to be my next question was, uh, what was your first track that you went to? So, so yeah, Gingerman is my only track I've been to. Um, I just, I want to hit some of the other tracks. Just being new, um, I wanted to really get familiar with one track just to know that the things I was changing were helping me progress. Um, going to a new track and you have to start over and learn that track and right. learn the vehicle on that track Yeah, so essentially like just using that as the control. Right? Yeah, that's the control yeah. You know, you don't want to change too many things too many variables and and not know if you're progressing Right, so so walk us through your your first track day leading up to it during it after it So the first track day um, super nervous, you know, you don't want to crash you don't want stuff to break you want the car to perform and, and you know, not have any issues. Um, so super nervous. Um, luckily I had some friends that uh, have Ryan uh, track days and compete in Chump Car that went with me um, to help me, you know, get through the day and run me through the process of, you know, tacking your car, you know, all the things needed to be checked, tire pressure, obviously, you know, right. torquing all your bolts and making sure that the car was safe and ready to, to track. My friend, uh, Connor, who, uh, Connor and Jacob were the ones who run Chump, and they, uh, they got in the car with me and ran me through the lines that they like to take and, you know, how to take certain turns and when to brake. And uh, thankfully for them, you know, I was able to pick up really quick, you know, how to get the car on the track safely. Uh, which is the most important. I recommend anybody who wants to get on track to, you know, find someone or have a friend that has tracked before, or even talk to the people at the track. You know, everybody's super nice. Yep. Yep. And just, you know, hey, you, can you run me through your line or get in on passenger and go for a ride with them. Um, it's super, super important, especially being new. Ever since you started tracking your car, have you done anything other than HPDE, like time attack or anything like that? Or has it just been just seat time at, at uh, HPDE? Yeah, it's just been seat time. Just been wanting to progress. And, and after every track day, you know, you go back, you watch some of the, your your uh, GoPro and look at your times and you try to, try to fix some of the errors you had. So I just wanted to just, you know, learn the car myself and not worry about competing, you know, and trying to mm -hmm. get a certain time or, I mean, the time's always fun having PRs and stuff, but um, it's more, once you start learning and piecing stuff together, the times just start going down by themselves. Yeah, um, yeah. it's a huge mental game, yeah, right? Like it's definitely mental. It's always, comp well, you know, if you look at it, like it's always competition, you're always competing against yourself. Yeah, you're almost, always right? competing <laughs> against yourself and you always want to do better and you always want to run faster. But, you know, once you start getting more comfortable in the car, it's just night and day, your times just start dropping. A rev match track day, I just felt comfortable in the car. Like I, it was hard to explain, like I wasn't nervous I wasn't so he so hard on myself, I think. I just kind of like let the car do what it had to do and I dropped two seconds. And it was just more of the comfortability and, and just trusting the car would work. And uh, it just it just kept getting faster and faster. Yeah, um, that's, that's kind of funny that you mentioned that because I, I recently listened to a little snippet of a guy on Instagram. I think his name's like EJ2 Track Red or something yeah, like that. Yeah. He runs a NASA Honda Challenge. And he actually said that differentiating an intermediate driver to an advanced driver yeah. was that exactly is is you know if you make mistakes like you don't you don't fester or like sulk in it for too yeah. long like you, you just acknowledge it you made the mistake and, and kind of laugh it off yep. like, All right, I'll, I'll do better next yep. time whereas like well, the early stages of an intermediate driver is they're just so hung up on the yeah. mistakes like oh like I yeah, gotta I could have done gotta, better yeah. yep. but, if you were to give one piece of advice to someone who wants to do their first track day, what would that be? Don't think your car is not good enough or fast enough. You could bring in any car with some good tires and some new brakes and you could go and have fun. I mean, it's just about getting out there and, you know, trying it. 
Uh, you don't have to have a full race car like this. You right. know. I went all out, so it was just because I've been in the automotive you know, racing scene for a while. I just felt like I needed to have something that was set up, uh, but you don't need to. You could take any car, stock motor, obviously, but it doesn't have to be swapped. And uh, just enjoy yourself, you know, just go with someone that has some experience so that the day, the track day is a little bit smoother and just have fun. Yeah. I mean, that's all it's about. One of the important things to take away from this is that even though this is Eric's first track car, yours doesn't have to be like this. Correct. Um, you know, wherever he is in his, in his personal life, like he's able to do and spend the money and build a car like this. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do yeah. the same exact thing. Yeah. Like like Eric said, just get it any car. Just yeah. make sure it's not pissing fluids everywhere. Yeah. Good yeah. tires, good brake fluid, I, and just get out there and get seated. Yeah, I think one of the days there was a like a stock 2003 Accord. He just had some fresh tires, nothing fancy, and he was out there getting it. He was taking some turns and doing good. I mean, for what it was, he was enjoying his day there. And, um, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be a race car. All right, aside from building cars, uh, lots of cars, because you build a lot of cars, really yeah. nice cars, yeah. and, uh, and driving, what are some other interests or hobbies that, that, that you have? I like, to, uh, I like to work out. You know, I have some uh, saltwater tanks. I like to do that kind of stuff. Um, but mainly, I'm super simple. I just work, work on cars, and I work out. Right? That's about it. Um, <laughs> the routine is like yeah, you know, a routine. work on the car, finish off in the gym. Yep, exactly. Cool. All right, and that wraps it up for today's TCR. Thanks, Eric, for showing us your car and giving us a little insight in your experiences as a driver. Um, if they wanted to ask you some questions or just follow you along in your build, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram uh, at boosted underscore EF. And just shoot me a DM, you know, any questions you have on some of the parts on my car or, you know, any advice on getting started as well. All right, so if you guys like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stay up to date with my car and my progress as a driver and also see really, really cool track cars like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay smooth, and we'll see you guys next time.